how do you get your first clients in real estate? Because here's what happens. You get the license. You passed the state test. They gave you that pocket card and the state has now granted you the public trust. You are allowed to help anybody with their real estate needs, even though you don't have the foggiest idea what you're doing. So you went straight away to your realtor association, took the orientation class. You learned about the code of ethics. You learned about the member benefits. You took the realtor pledge and put on that R and now you have been turned loose, not just as a licensee with that pocket card. You are now somebody who has decided to hold yourself to the highest level of standards. So you went to your brokerage and you said, all right, I'm ready. Let's roll. Let's get some clients going. And if your brokerage, just like most brokerages that have existed since real estate started in its current form, which would be 1908, they handed you a telephone and said, get after it. Now, maybe your phone has a cord on it like the one on my desk does. It's kind of a relic now. I can test people with it. Or maybe your phone looks like that one that sits in your hand. And who are you supposed to call? Where do you get a client? You don't know what you're doing. Well, the first place you might find a client in real estate is actually in that phone. If you don't tell people that you're a practicing realtor, they won't know. I know this sounds crazy because I talk to a lot of early career agents and they're allergic to prospecting because they don't want to be salespeople. Okay, well, I'm going to have to tell you something amazing here. If you've decided to be a real estate salesperson, you're going to have to sell things. Now, that does not mean you have to be icky, slimy, and gross. What it does mean is you have to tell people that you're in business. There are more realtors right now than there have ever been. It is literally the most competitive business on the planet. Almost 1.6 million realtors nationally. That does not include the licensees that did not join the trade association. Here in North Carolina, we have almost double the number of licensees that are not realtors. And so you are in a space where everybody knows somebody. You also have to realize that most humans have a sphere of people that already includes a real estate licensee. So you're going to have to figure out how you stand out. And the first way you stand out is by doing the work. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but you're going to have to work to make it in real estate. Now, am I getting a little bit spicy right now? I am because as the owner of a brokerage, I spend a lot of time asking my agents to please go do prospecting and tell people they're in the business. And like most people, they would rather sit back and eat bonbons and wait for the phone to ring. And I get it. That's human nature. You want people to come to you because that's less confrontational and they're probably not going to holler and scream at you and cuss you out and tell you to go away. But you're going to have to take that risk. Prospecting and selling things involves risk. And the risk that you undertake when you pick up the phone is that the person on the other end does not want to talk to you. Not because you're not an amazing human who is fearfully and wonderfully made, as it says in the Psalms, but because they don't want to be sold anything. And they have this perception about real estate pros that you're always own because some of you are always own and you actually don't have to be because that's one of the little asterisk secrets here is that when you call somebody to find that first client, you actually don't have to just talk real estate. I know it's crazy. You might just want to say hey to them and ask them how they're doing. And they're going to ask how you're doing. And you can say, I've got some exciting news. And they'll say, what's your exciting news? And you'll say, I've just gotten my real estate license. I have become a realtor. I'm wearing the R. I am ethical and I am ready to work. And they'll be delighted to hear that. In fact, they're going to be more delighted to hear that news as truthful, genuine information than if you lean into some of the old tired tropes we've used in real estate. Like, well, it feels like for forever when they ask you how long you've been in. So instead, just take a very relaxed approach and know that the relationships are going to be more fruitful if they're genuine. But you got to call people. Now, before you're thinking, Lee Brown, who am I supposed to call with that phone? I don't know anybody. Well, that's not true because if you've survived long enough in the real world to make it to licensing class, you know some people. Maybe they're from your former job. Maybe they're from school. Maybe they're from high school or elementary school. Maybe it's your teachers. Maybe it's your cousin, although there's one of my cousins I, I don't call for real estate needs because that's just not a fruitful conversation. So you should also have some discernment about who you call. Now, what if in your phone is your realtor from when you bought your house? Should you call them? 
Absolutely you should, because they might have the heart of a leader and a mentor that says, I'm so excited for you. Let me help out. They might hang up on you. You just don't know. But they also might have gotten out of real estate since you bought your home and would be delighted to share with you what they learned along the way. Don't prejudge what the conversations will look like. You just have to make them. Now, that's the first place you can find a client is in your phone, saved in the contact manager. And this is a pretend phone because I'm recording on mine. Now, the second place you might find a new client when you're in real estate is by being active in your community. And active in your community does not mean faking it. It does not mean joining 12 nonprofits and just trying to bounce around from one to one. It means spending some time where you actually have a passion for service. That might be in the PTA at your kid's school. That might be saying, I'm not going to be in PTA leadership, but I will show up and help with the fundraiser. It could mean that you volunteer in the front office and say, I will spell the secretary for an hour while she goes to do paperwork. It could mean that you tutor some child that's experiencing learning loss after COVID. There are so many ways to be engaged in the education system. You might decide that you'd like to volunteer at the Battered Women's Shelter, the Homeless Shelter, any of the food crisis places. You could be an amazing resource if that's where your heart is. Maybe your heart is for puppies and kitties and you want to go work over at the shelter and do your best to help get them rehomed before their, top, their clock has ticked down to zero, that could be an amazing place for you to go meet people. What you have to remember is that finding clients in real estate is a numbers game. And you're going to hear this a lot when you're in any kind of a sales space. The more outreaches you make, the more likely you are to find somebody that will work with you. Therefore, if you do one thing today, well, that's more than the zero that your competitors did. And if you do two things today, that's more than the zeros and the ones did. And if you do 53 things today in the way of activities, that is going to be so many contacts that you've made. Somebody out there hopefully likes you and says, you're not so terrible terrible. Let's talk real estate. Now, the third place you could find that first time client, that first person would be working with a busy agent. Now, in your office, in your brokerage, in your firm, there is somebody who kills it. They're at the top of the sales board every month. They know everybody. They get every opportunity at a listing and the buyers all know them by name. But you know what that means? That means that they only have so many hours in the day just as you do. And so they may have opportunities to help and they just can't get to it because their bandwidth is just completely maxed out. So what if you go to this agent and say, I'd love to learn from you. May I observe how you conduct the business? May I earn some of your leftover business? In fact, if it is a single wide out in the country, I want to earn that business as well because what you will find is that a really established agent who's long in the tooth may have such an established list of clients that they can't get to that first timer at the low price point, not because they don't have a heart to serve them and not because they don't care, but because they are going to spend time with the people they already have an existing relationship with, which means they have leftovers. And if you're too proud to take leftovers, this might not be the business for you. But if you are the hungry person that says, you know what? I absolutely will work with every price point, every consumer, and I will give them the best real estate experience of their lives, then you're going to find your way in real estate. And that's just three of the ways you can find your first client. There are so many out there, but if what I have said today scares you and you don't want to call people and you don't want to do community work and you really don't want to have to go begging somebody for their crumbs, then perhaps find a, a different professional venue because real estate rewards hard work it rewards people who have a heart for service and it rewards people who are willing to work with any neighbor in any zip code because that makes our community stronger. And frankly, if you're the person who said all three of those sound like good ideas and I'm excited you've chosen real estate and you're going to do great things.